Conversations next uh, with Dennis Crowley, co-founder and CEO of Foursquare, and Ben Horowitz uh, after that, general partner at Andreessen Horowitz. Both of them will be moderated by my friend John Heileman, uh, always an excellent moderator, or I should say interlocutor. So let me uh, bring up John, who will uh, come up with Dennis, and then he will bring up Ben. John, Dennis, are you there? Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Dennis, good to see you. Is this mic working, guys? Mic's on now? Better. Should I do a mic say, test? Yeah, say hello. Okay. Good. Yeah, it works. Um, so, Dennis, we're psyched to have you here. We have a, we're going to do these next two conversations. They're both going to be about 20 minutes each, and we're not going to do any audience Q&A, unfortunately, because all of the people who came before us went long. And um, I'm filled with a little bit of rage about that, but and on your behalf. <laughs> so if you guys decide you want to do like Occupy Web 2.0, that would be like a good idea. Anybody wants to <laughs> stage a protest, I can give you the address to Battelle's house in Marin if you want to go occupy Battelle, the Battelle mansion too, uh, for later on. Uh, it's all their fault if you're feeling bad in any case. Um, so Dennis, you, you are the founder, co-founder, CEO, Foursquare, not your first social media company. You did uh, uh, dodgeball before this. Uh -huh. You started this company in 2009. I want to, we're going to drill down on some, on some more granular things as we go, but I want to start with a kind of basic thing, right? Um, how many people have downloaded the app so far in the, the over 10 million? Yeah, over 10 million is the number we've been giving out. I don't know how many actually downloaded the app. Those are accounts that we have right, right. now. So how many people are actually using the app as yeah. opposed to how many have downloaded it? It depends how you measure it. Like, you know, for a while we were measuring it as the number of people that were checking in on a given, uh, on a given period, like a month or a week. Um, and now we're starting to measure on the number of people that are opening the app. So we haven't been disclosing the numbers, but we're pretty satisfied with the results. Right, but the numbers, like, there's a, there's a decent number of people who have downloaded the app and are not using it, right? Yeah, I, th I think it's true of any, you know, any social site like that. But, but is that, did you see that as a problem, that, that, that there's, a, that there's a, a relatively sizable, though non-public, gap between those two things? Is that, does that tell you something about the fact that some number of people who are inclined to download the app are not finding it useful in their lives and well, is that for, a problem for you as a business for us or for the space in general well take your pick i yeah. mean i i, I was sp speaking directly to your to, to you but. No, well i think it's just the, it's the way that like anytime you build something there's gonna be people that sign up because they're curious and like our challenge is to turn those users into active users and i think every time that we see i mean every time that we launch um, a new piece of functionality we get to see that that bump go up a little bit so we do have that discrepancy you know not not all of those users are using it on a regular basis but we're pretty satisfied with the number of people that are using it on a regular basis to accomplish a whole bunch of different types of tasks. So can you talk about what you've done to try to narrow that, to try to, to increase the utility of the, of, the, of the product? Because I know for a lot yeah. of people, just anecdotally, uh -huh. I'm, I'm someone who's a big social media user. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, fall, I fall squarely into that category. Yeah. I, I, I have downloaded the app three different times, uh -huh. yet I'm not a regular user of yeah. it because it's not totally clear to me why I should be. Yeah, see, that, that doesn't stress me out too much because that's the experience that I had with Twitter, too. I was super early on Twitter, and I kept coming back to it, and I couldn't find the thing that got, you know, that would get me to stick around for a while. And then, you know, maybe 18 months after they launched, it, it hit me, and I was like, oh, this is the thing. And I think we're kind of marching in that same direction with Foursquare. You know, first it was all about the game dynamics, and it was about the specials for folks, and, you know, that got a lot of people to stick around. Um, we started launching the Explore functionality, I mean, the recommendation engine. The more that you check in, the more we can tell you about what you want to do. And with the new functionality that we launched last week, the Foursquare Radar stuff, I think that's going to make some of the biggest difference, because it's a way that you can participate in the ecosystem without actually having to remember to take out the app and use it. Like, it just knows what's going on in your life, and it can start pushing messages to you. I want to talk about Radar more uh -huh. specifically in a second, but I, I'm curious about whether, I mean, clearly at the beginning when you guys first launched, the notion of the game dynamic was like part of the way that you got people to be involved. Yeah. Do you think that that's something that's going to be, continue to be a major part of the product, of the experience, or is that something that as you guys grow and add functionality, that that, di that game dynamic that you guys were famous for yeah. is going to kind of fade from in its importance? It's, a, it's a still a big part of the product, and there's a lot of people that really love it. Like, anytime that we tweak the game mechanics, like, we hear you know, positive comments and negative comments from users. It's a big part of the brand's personality. And, you know, personally, I'm a big believer in the idea of using game mechanics to help, you know, push people into different directions in real life. Like, how do you encourage people to do more interesting things? And I think we've done, we've taken a really solid stab at, at trying to solve that. Um, you know, as we've been growing so quickly, like, we never anticipated we'd be over 
10 million users so quickly. So, you know, we've been focusing on other things like the recommendation engine, um, some of the merchant tools, like a lot of the radar stuff, because that's the direction we want to take the app eventually. And I think once those things start to stabilize, and like once we, we hit that point where Foursquare is very, very sticky the way we want it to be, then I think we start to go back and revisit some of the game mechanics. Right. So talk about radar. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's using the iOS 5 functionality, huh? right? So talk about what that lets your users, either for those who are existing users, people might want to start yeah. using. What, what, does it, what does it let me do? Yeah, well, this is, I mean, this is the stuff that we've been trying to build since grad school, since before grad school. And this is what we always thought Dodgeball would grow up to be. But it's, a, you know, it's an app that you can just, like, you download it, it's on your phone, you just turn it on, and you don't really have to use it that often. Like, you don't have to go in and remember to take it out. It's just by being on, you can you know, kind of take into consideration all the different contextual triggers that are nearby, what direction I'm walking, what I've done in the past, what time of day it is, am I with anyone, and then use that information to buzz people's phones and let them know about things that are nearby. So in New York, for example, you know, I remember leaving the office just last week, and you know, I'm walking down the street, and I get this message like, oh, six of your friends happen to be two blocks away. And that's something that I wouldn't have known about otherwise. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known about if I was, you know, unless I was checking the app. Um, we can do the same stuff for you know, recommendations, right? So uh, we have a whole bunch of users that are um, you know, using Foursquare to keep track of the places that they want to remember. There's a whole bunch of content sites that are, are creating um, like lists of like, the best burgers, the best things to do in Austin, the best experiences to have in Paris. And once you put those things onto Foursquare, you can just walk around some of these cities and Foursquare will buzz you and let you know when you can take advantage of those. And that's, like, that's a big change and I think uh, a, a way that like, it's the big change in the way that like, we think of apps. Like, I think one of the biggest hurdles that we have with Foursquare is that you have to think about using it. Like, whenever you walk into a Starbucks, you have to think about taking out your phone and checking in. And that's, that asks, that's asking a lot of people. And so if we can lower that barrier and we can you know, also start pushing people interesting content about things that are nearby, then like, that's, I think it's really going to um, you know, juice the experience for a lot of folks. Right, so it's sort of like making the, it's making the app both kind of pervasive and ambient in a way. Like um, yeah, like, yeah. Like, well, that's, I mean, that's what we've always wanted to do. It's like an app automatic. that you don't have to use. It's, right. just, it's just on. It's letting you know about what's nearby. And do you feel like that, that, like that feature is now, is, like, is it fully tuned? Is, are you guys yeah. happy with where you're at, or is it still a work in progress? I'm, I can't be any happier that we got this thing out there. <laughs> I've wanted to do this for so many years, and we finally pushed it out there. And, you know, it's kind of like, it's a little bit of an experiment in, in, in progress, right? So the stuff that's going on with iOS 5, with region monitoring, it's, it's new. Like, we couldn't do this stuff. We could do this stuff in the past, but it would drain your battery in four hours, right? And so what, what's new about, you know, the new Apple OS and some of this, the hardware that's in the, uh, in the for us, it's like it just allows us to run these things kind of all day long without killing your phone, right? Um, wait, what was it? I, I just work in progress. Oh, or, the, the work or, in progress. Or, or are you or you feel like you're like all the way there? Well, I mean, we're hearing we're hearing good things from some users, and we're hearing some negative things from others. Like sometimes we send too many results, sometimes we don't send uh, as many as we want to. So we're still in the process of tuning all of that stuff, and I think it's going to be um, you know an ongoing process. So you guys took a very different approach to how to build this business to how Groupon did, right? Groupon mm -hmm. went around and, and focused on building up its relationships <coughs> with, with retailers and with businesses and with, and with the, that side of things. Well, you guys built a user base, right? Yeah. They're, they took, they, they're kind of doing the, 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 the basic utility of the, of the products are sort of the same, yeah. but they went a totally different way. Mm -hmm. So do you feel happy with having gone, with focusing not on the, on the, on the business side and focusing exclusively on trying to build a, a unique, a big, a big user base, and yeah. a unique customer experience? Was that the right choice or do you sometimes look at the way Groupon has grown and think, hey, I wish we'd gone that way, I wish we'd done more of that. They now are in a position that they've created real barriers to us being able to build the kind of business we want to build. Yeah, it's, um, first of all, I wouldn't say that the products are the same. I think what we're trying to do is, is a lot more, um, it's a lot more technically challenging. It's a lot more ambitious in, in different ways. Um, and, you know, like, we're a product-oriented company. Like, I'm, I'm a product person. That's the stuff I've been doing forever. Like, the, the company itself has a very product feel type of personality. And so, like, you know, we're in this game just so we can build the things that we don't think anyone else is going to build. Like, Radar is that, Explorer is that, and that's the stuff that we really want to do. We just want to build interesting product. Um, you know, as, as the product gets better, the user base gets bigger. As the user base gets bigger, like, we can start to think about different ways to monetize. But, you know, the things that we want to build are these tools that change the way that everyone in this room experiences the real world. And, like, it's our thinking that if we can make those tools, like, really, really amazing, then the rest of the journey is going to be a little bit easier. I mean, it, it also seems like there's kind of a calculated bet involved, right? That the notion that, you know, for the restaurant owners, for instance, <coughs> mm -hmm. you know, they will, eventually, they will, they'll, they'll go where the users are rather than, yeah. than, 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 than the users following the restaurant owners that are on a certain service, that, 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 that the opposite dynamic will ultimately work to your advantage, yep. right? Um, and, and do you see evidence that that's the case? Or again, I mean, to get to the specific thing, do you, 
I mean, forget about you went the way you wanted to go. You're comfortable with the way you wanted to go. Yeah. Has Groupon built a, a building the business they've built? Have they created a situation that's made your life difficult and created an obstacle, a hurdle that you have to get over and that's a problem for you? Yeah, it's, it's the question of like whether the companies are competitive or kind of complementary. And, you know, I don't know we have the full answer to that yet. Like what I do know is that um, a lot of local merchants, like they were spending whatever ad dollars they had on, you know, like on newspaper ads or maybe yellow page ads, like they weren't terribly effective. And then here comes Groupon saying, hey, local merchants, you can use the internet to actually drive new customers. And whether that's, you know, successful long term for Groupon or for Living Social, like the bigger part of it is they've, who, who knows how many merchants that they've contacted, but they're teaching an army of local merchants that, hey, there are better tools out there. Groupon is one of them. Living Social is another one. And Foursquare is going to be one of them too. So it makes our job in selling the tools that we're building a little bit easier just because they're kind of warmed up into the fact that you can use the internet to drive customers. Now you guys are, you guys have, have really have started focusing on building tools for brands and for businesses now in a way that you yeah. hadn't previously. Uh -huh. Talk about that. What, what does that entail? Yeah, so I think one of the, one of the best things that we did as a, as a company um, early on is that as much as we were focused on, the, on building stuff for products, like we realized early on that merchants wanted to participate in the ecosystem as well. And instead of just punting it and being like, oh, that's our monetization strategy, we'll get back to it when we have 20 million users, we kind of embraced it. And we built, you know, for every three things that we would do for an end user, we would do something for a merchant. And I think the merchants have been along for the ride. Like they've been offering mayor specials and check-in specials. And, you know, they've been, you know, they've been putting all this content that's into Foursquare that's actually encouraging users to check in more often. And I think that's one of the cool parts of the ecosystem. Like, as the monetization plans start to become um, a little bit more formalized, and as we get more merchants participating, the product gets better. People are getting more deals. And now there's a whole subset of Foursquare users that, yeah, like, I, they don't use it for the, f for the game dynamics, but they use it specifically to get deals from merchants, specifically to get special treatment from these places. And I think that's, that's you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a really important thing that's going on. I, I'm, really foc I'm really glad that we focused in that direction early on in the company's life. Yeah. You guys have been um, in this position that every, uh, any self-respecting startup uh, fears more than anything else, which is to have uh, both the two huge, enormous companies in Google and Facebook, um, yep. not just trying to compete with you, but ripping off everything you're doing on, on almost a daily basis in a very direct way. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with that? I mean, they have you know, these user bases that are <laughs> vast um, yep. compared to even to your healthy, you have a very healthy user base. They have much healthier user bases. Yeah. And they have tons of engineers and they have a lot of money and they have you know, all the things they have. So does that just scare the shit out of you? Uh, um, how do you deal, how do you, how do you deal is, with that on a daily basis? I, it's one of the more challenging things to deal with. Like to know that like, you know, when Facebook was, was going to launch places last year, like, that's a big moment for the company. Like, like what are we going to do about this? Are you either going to kill us or we're going to sit there and we're going to focus on doing what we do best and we're going to survive this. And, you know, I think because we had that specific focus and because, um, you know, like we're, you know, we have a very narrow focus on building things that help people experience the real world, and, and like our whole company is kind of aligned by that. By separating ourselves there, um, you know, we've just been able to kind of hold them off a little bit. So it's definitely, it, it, is, it is stressful, but looking at like how we're able to survive the Facebook onslaught, like that's a big motivating thing for, for the company in general. So what have they, I mean, when you look at the offerings that they've done that have been directly competitive with yours, yeah. offer your assessment of how well they've done. I mean, I think they're doing great stuff. Like, I'm a, I use Facebook all the time. I'm sure a lot of people do here as well. Um, I'm just not of the, you know, I'm not a believer of, like, they are going to do everything on the Internet as best, you know, better than anyone else can possibly do, right? And I think they've, they've nailed their niche, which is, like, they're helping people communicate and share things online, and that's what they're really good at. And, like, we've kind of found our niche, which is helping people connect with places offline, places and experiences offline. And, like, I think just because we can focus specifically and solely on that, like, that gives us an advantage. Like, those are the only things that we're worried about, and they've got all these existing other use cases that they, they have to continue to support. So you're like the ultimate power user of, the, of your service, right? I mean, you, you are, you know, a, you are a, a very personally identified with the yeah. service. You are out late a lot, um, going to a lot of places, and people know where you are. Um, is that a, a, was that a tactic that you adopted as, a, as a, a way of building the brand, or is that just you're like living your life and this is a tool that you wanted to use, and so you use it, and so be it? Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's always been what it is. I mean, that's what Dodgeball was. Dodgeball was a tool that we built when our friends got laid off because we wanted to know where they were hanging out in the afternoons. Now they didn't have jobs. And like Dodgeball turned into something much bigger, and we started seeing all the data that was going into Dodgeball being like, wow, we can do all this interesting stuff with recommendations. And then like once we you know, started working on it again with Foursquare, we 
just continue to see these opportunities. Like, it's, it's funny. People ask me this all the time. It's like, well, how do you come up with, like, the killer idea for a startup? I'm like, well, the way to do it isn't to sit down at a whiteboard and to identify the best market opportunities. Like, that's not the way that we did it. Like, we just built things that, that we want to build. Like, the stuff that we're building now is the stuff that we want to be using a year from now. Now, if I, if, if I were your, one of your investors, mm -hmm. you know, I would see the way that you use the product, and I would look at and see you were checking in at such and such a bar at 1 a.m. and another nightclub at 3 a.m. and another bar at 5 a.m. And I'd say, God, it's great that Dennis <laughs> uses the product this much, but I'm not sure that I necessarily want my, my CEO um, you know, burning the candle at, at all four ends. I mean, I that, how, many, how many of your investors have questioned uh, some of your social proclivities as I, they are I think manifest if, on the service. If you checked, if you tracked my check-in history, um, like over time, you'd see a lot of the late-night ones have gone away, just oh. because it's it's uh, it's it's become a lot more demanding to you know to continue to run the company at the scale. Um, you guys are growing like crazy. Do you want to talk a little bit about your growth, your global growth? You're just opening up an office in Europe for the first time, I think. In the yeah, last we got week. one guy that's in Europe. We're looking for a desk for him now, uh, and we're sure that's going to grow into um, <laughs> grow into like a, a much larger thing. I mean, that's how it's started here in San Francisco. Like we were bumming desks from Jack at Square for our two biz dev guys, and now we've got 15 guys working around the corner, and we can't hire people fast enough. You know, we started at a you know, we started at my kitchen table in New York, and then we eventually ended up with an office at the table, which is great. And now we're busting the seams on our second office, and we're looking for additional office space. So. Is, there a, is there a way in which, the, in which the, the way in which the service, are there not just lessons you've learned, obviously there are lessons you've learned from what you've done here that will apply as you start to build out on a more global basis, but is there any kind of synergy between those businesses, or you just have to take it market by market as you roll out across the world? Between, I'm sorry, between what Between businesses? the U.S. and between, between doing this in the U.S. and doing it everywhere else. Oh, it's, it's interesting. Like, when we first launched, we just targeted, you know, a couple, um, you know, like five cities across the U.S., and we blew it out to be all the U.S., and then it was a big hurdle to get over and drop it in Europe. And, um, you know, one of the things that we've seen is that Foursquare Uches, it's not really that different if, if it's in the U.S. or if it's in Europe or if it's in Asia. You know, about 50% of the usage is actually outside of the U.S., so it's like a huge global market opportunity for us. Um, and, you know, like the, the reason we just didn't draw people in Europe earlier is like it's just hard to, it's hard to manage that, and sometimes you can get a little bit ahead of yourself. Now that we've got the San Francisco office relatively stable and it's kind of humming on its own, it's like, all right, well, we've got all these requests that we have to deal with in Europe. Like, that's the next location to start putting people on the ground. A year from now, you'll still be an independent company, yes or no? I think so. I, I mean, I, I think we're doing stuff that no one else is doing. And, like, the bigger we get, like, the bigger the opportunities um, starts to become to us. Well, and, the bigger, in a different and way. the bigger the offers for acquisition. So um, are you, do you feel like it's important to stay? I mean, is, that, is it a priority to you to stay independent? There are companies that have obviously turned down big acquisition offers. You guys are obviously attempting target. Yeah. Uh, some companies in the past have resisted that. Others have said, hey, you know, perfectly happy to get bought. Would you I, um, the only thing that we want to do is build the product the way that we want to do it. Like, if we do it independently, that's great. If we do it as part of another company, that's another thing. But, like, you know, we, that's, all we want to do is get the product to where we think it should be three years from now. That's the thing that's most satisfying to us. Um, you know, the thing is, every, uh, I've never been a part of a company that is running as fast as we are. We're launching new big features, like, every three or four weeks. It's kind of nuts. And every time we do that, more of the puzzle pieces start to fit together, and you can just see how this thing is going to look a year from now. Or I can see how it's going to look from now, and it's just, um, it's, it's going to be a huge opportunity for us. Th this is the moment uh, in which I would normally turn oh. to the audience, as I said before, and ask them for their questions, which would have certainly been better than mine, but because of the fascist back there, I can't <laughs> do that. So, as, so we'll just... We'll just have to say thank you very much for coming in. Everybody give Dennis a hand, and we'll have our next... Um, thank you. It's a quick 15 minutes. He's around if you want to talk to him. He's around. Thanks, man. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Uh, ben Horowitz, uh, my friend.